This is a live channel's television event. We welcome His Excellency Muhammadu Buhari, GCFR, President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, to this prelude of the Nigerian International Petroleum Summit, tagged a decade of gas. And of course, we also welcome members of the National Assembly. We welcome the Honorable Minister of the Petroleum Resources, the Permanent Secretary, Federal Minister of Petroleum Resources. We welcome the heads of agencies of the Federal Minister of Petroleum Resources. We welcome the managing directors of um, the international oil and gas companies and independent oil and gas companies in the room. We want to particularly appreciate the managing director of Nigeria, LNG, Mr. Tony Atta, for single-handedly as a company sponsoring this event. Shall we please give them a round of applause? We welcome presidents and chairmen of industry associations. We welcome our illustrious panel of speakers and moderators. We welcome invited captains of industry, members of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. My name is Richmond Osuji, and without taking much of our time anymore, I go straight into the program of the morning as I begin by taking the welcome address. I ask you to join me in welcoming the Group Managing Director of the NNPC, Mr. Mele Kiari. Your Excellency Mr. President, Muhammad Buhari, UCFR, President and Commanding Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Honorable Ministers, Members of the National Assembly, the Secretary General of OPEC, Secretary General of the Gas Producing Association, and Secretary General of the International Energy Forum, and also the very distinguished President of the International Gas Union, His Excellency Joe Kang. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, my colleagues, uh, uh, let me stand on the existing protocol established by, by the MC and, and to let me express our profound gratitude to His Excellency, President Muhammad Buhari, for the strategic foresight, leadership and support to the Nigerian oil and gas industry, and especially for its inputs at, at various, strat and various strategic initiatives that is transforming the Nigeria's energy landscape. Yes, Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, this pre summit conference is coming at the most crucial time as the world transits to cleaner energy and Nigeria is surely set to play a strategic role in the new world energy order. Mr. President, the technology and innovation is facilitating a new energy transition aimed at decarbonizing the world and safeguarding the climate. But renewable energy sources of solar and wind a key component of the new energy mix are influenced by seasons and are not transportable to demand centers that are short of wind or sun. Transition fuels is therefore necessary and clearly unavoidable. As part of the clean energy drive, natural gas and by extension blue hydrogen will therefore be heavily dependent upon to provide significant proportion of global energy mix as well as guarantee feedstock to gas-based industries. Nigeria, under the leadership of President Mohamed Buhari, has committed huge resources to ensure that domestic gas infrastructure reach every corner of our country to deepen natural gas utilization, support investment in power and gas-based industries, grow the economy, and generate employment for millions of our young people. Of course, all this is at the backdrop of the fact that we are a gas nation with over 203 trillion standard cubic of proven gas reserve and potentially over 600 trillion standard cubic foot of gas. Our efforts at monetizing the huge gas resources has been modest, but clearly spurred to higher level by numerous policy and industry interventions since 2016, culminating in the declaration of year 2020 as the year of gas, and now progressing with the decade of gas from year 2021. It is needless to mention that several strategic projects have been delivered by NMPC and her partners to deepen delivery of gas into the domestic market and elevate the build-up of greater potential for gas export. The completion of the LS2, commission of the OB3 Lot 2, the NPDC Rosso Gas Handling Facility, the SIPCO Gas Processing Plan can easily be cited even without the mention 
of the ongoing strategic backbone infrastructure delivery projects as AKK pipeline, the OB3 final hookup, the Nigerian Morocco gas pipeline, and several other gas based industry in initiatives. All this will herald the sunset of gas revolution in our country within the decade. May I crave your indulgence to mention that as part of the Nigeria's journey to making the decade of gas a reality, the Nigerian government has also rolled out the Autogas Initiative to provide alternative cleaner and cheaper source of transportation fuel. This has achieved tremendous traction and is clearly supported hugely by the entire oil and gas industry. We are grateful to Mr. To Excellency Mr. President for the continuous support and interest in the National Nigerian Gas Expansion Program and other initiatives geared towards greater gas monetization and utilization in our country. Therefore, the deliberation at this summit will no doubt provide further input that will sharpen and accelerate the attainment of gas revolution in our country. Your Excellency, Mr. President, Honorable Ministers, leaders of the National Assembly, international organizations, captains of industry, our partners in this business, distinguished guests, members of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is indeed a special privilege to welcome you all to this historic event, heralding the decade of gas and the transformation of portions of our country on the back of natural gas. Thank you and welcome for the decade of gas and a very and a decade of prosperity and growth for our country. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. President. Your Excellencies, very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, once again we thank and appreciate the Group Managing Director of the NMPC, Mr. Kiari, for that concise and incisive welcome address. We're switching on now to the goodwill messages. We'll take the very first goodwill, messages, uh, goodwill message from the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC whose Secretary General, our very own, will be addressing us. Let's now welcome His Excellency, Mohamed Sanusi Bakindo. Mr. President, Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I am deeply honored to have been asked to deliver this goodwill message as my home country, Nigeria, opens its Decade of Gas Summit. Under the visionary leadership of our esteemed President, Mohamed Buhari, the Decade of Gas from 2021 to 2030 looks to place Nigeria at the forefront of this vital global industry. From OPEC, I would also like to express our deep gratitude to the President, who has long been an advocate, including as Minister of Petroleum, and head of Nigeria's delegation to OPEC in the organization's overaching commitment to sustainable market stability. This was clearly on display during the unprecedented oil market slump in 2020 as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, with the president playing a leadership role in unifying the commitment of participants in the declaration of cooperation and in turn helping pull the industry back from the brink. We continue to strongly follow his consensus building footsteps that came to the fore during his tenure as Nigeria's Minister of Petroleum and Natural Resources during the late 1970s. The President has been witness to many great moments in OPEC's history and Nigeria's role in this. Our great country celebrates its 50-year anniversary of OPEC membership in July this year. It has been both a leader, a bridge builder over the past five decades, and this continues under President Muhammad Buhari. The petroleum industry bill that seeks to comprehensively reform Nigeria's oil and gas industry is currently moving through the hallowed chambers of the National Assembly, and thus the decade of gas is both timely and relevant. The importance is also evident from OPEC's world oil outlook. The world oil outlook sees natural gas as the fastest growing fossil fuel over the forecast period, driven by higher urbanization rates, industrial demand, and its competitiveness over coal in power generation. Moreover, at the end of the world oil outlook, 
forecast period in 2045, oil and gas are still expected to make up over 50% of the global energy mix. In fact, global primary energy demand is set to increase by 25% in the period to 2045. The world needs more energy, and Nigeria has a reliable and dependable supply of hydrocarbons to global markets has a key role to play in this regard. At the same time, there is the ongoing energy transition and the associated challenge, ensuring there is enough energy supply to meet future demand growth and achieving this in a sustainable way, balancing the needs of people in relation to their social welfare, the economy, and the environment. Looking at the scale of the energy transition challenge, we need to utilize all resources efficiently. Tackling emissions has many pathways, and we need to explore them all. The oil and gas industries are part of the solution. We possess critical resources and expertise that can help unlock our carbon-free future. It is also important to remind ourselves of the historic plunge in oil and gas investments in 2020. In the oil sector alone, upstream oil capital expenditure could fall by more than 30% in 2020. A shrill wake-up call exceeding the annual dramatic decline seen in the severe industry downturn in 2015 and 2016. To put this in some perspective globally to 2045, our projections show that investments of more than 12 trillion US dollars will be needed in the upstream, midstream, and downstream. I would like to commend the President for keeping faith with the requirements of continued heavy investments, including the critical gas projects such as Ajakuta, Kaduna, Kano Natural Gas Pipeline, the Nigeria LNG Train 7 project, and actively promoting several fertilizer blending plants across the country, supporting the ongoing agrarian revolution. Nigeria's Decade of Gas Initiative also shines a beacon of light on the importance of the Gas Exporting Countries Forum and the value of multilateralism. OPEC and the GECF have much in common. We have some of the same member countries, including Nigeria, share similar founding principles and collaborate together. Gas is vital to Nigeria's future, as is oil, and both will be fuels of choice globally for the foreseeable future and instrumental in facilitating the energy transition. What is clear is that no one should be left behind. Sustainable development goal number seven of the United Nations ensures access to affordable, reliable, sustainable, and modern energy for all people of the world. I hope that viewpoints, information, and analysis from this summit can benefit all stakeholders. It is by working together that we can build a future worthy of future generations. On behalf of OPEC, I salute Mr. President for taking yet another giant stride in the development of our great country, Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you very much, His Excellency Mohamed Sanusi Bakindo, Secretary General of OPEC. We're moving on now to the next goodwill message, and this time we're taking it from the Secretary General Gas Exporting Countries Forum. Let's welcome His Excellency Dr. Yuri Senturi. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to take this opportunity to express my sincere appreciation to the organizers of the Decade of Gas with the theme of Thoughts a Gas Powered Economy by 2030, which kicks off uh, the Nigerian government's initiative of marking this decade as uh, the Decade of uh, Gas Development uh, for Nigeria. Uh, factoring the long-term economic growth and population increase, we project uh, the global primary energy demand uh, to expand by 24 percent. 
the future structure of the global energy mix uh, will become more diversified with natural gas and renewables becoming the leading sources that will supply our future energy. Natural gas uh, will displace other energy sources in a range of sectors and will be indispensable fuel in the long run as a global enabler to the transition to a low-carbon energy system. The 2019 Malabo Declaration at the outcome of the 5th GCF Summit of Heads of State and Government held in Equatorial Guinea uh, crystallizes our member countries' ambition uh, very clearly by stating uh, that uh, to promote uh, the GCF cooperation with African countries to use uh, gas as uh, the core source of energy in their development programs and uh, climate change policies with the aim to overcome energy poverty, enhance development and to mitigate carbon dioxide emissions. Last December, uh, the firm signed a memorandum of understanding with UNESCO with a particular focus on empowering Africa. For the time being, six GCF member countries represent uh, the African continent. My particular appreciation goes to His Excellency President Mohamedou Buhari, as well as His Excellency Timipre Silva, Honorable Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, for extending the invitation to the Gas Exporting Countries Forum to take part in this event. Working closely with our esteemed Nigerian counterparts, I can testify that the energy sector in Nigeria is witnessing perhaps a golden era of sustainable growth and is being made future-proof for the upcoming generations of Nigerians. The development of the energy sector in Nigeria will bear fruit for the country but also for the whole African continent where currently 789 million people have no access to clean cooking and 535 million uh, with no access to electrification. Uh, these communities deserve access to affordable, reliable and sustainable modern energy in order to become part of the global sustainable development goals, uh, particularly goal number seven of clean energy by 2030. Uh, the GCF has dedicated uh, uh, its, energy, its energies uh, towards uh, realizing this noble mission. The GCF has established uh, the Gas Research Institute based in Algeria to explore and develop new technologies to decarbonize natural gas. Nigeria is a founder member of the GCF and we enjoy close cooperation in many aspects of uh, gas market development. I would like to highly praise the country's determination to remain a reliable supplier and energy partner to the world. Just last year, as the world was going through the upheavals caused by the COVID-19 pandemic, the government of Nigeria took the bold step to proceed on the planned construction of LNG train number seven, which is so remarkable, especially considering the economics of the country and uh, the many jobs tied to it. Africa is many Africas together. For example, when we talk about the just and fair energy transition in Africa, it's important to note uh, that the answers uh, that uh, part, uh, parts of Africa require might differ from the global north. But we know that uh, investment in, clean, uh, in cleaner energy, such as natural gas, which according to, uh, to our latest projections uh, is set to grow from presently 6% to 10% by 2050 in production supply from Africa, would increase uh, national GDPs, jobs and create prosperity. And uh, that is a narrative uh, we must uh, take forward in terms of making sure that Africa advances in tandem with the world. We count on our long-standing members such as Nigeria to work with us as well as the GCF community and all other stakeholders so that we can build capacity, institutional, human, financial, to create and maintain an energy system that fits the 21st century with natural gas at its center. Thank you so much for your kind attention and God bless you. And God bless you too, His Excellency Dr. Yuri Sinturing, Secretary General of the Gas Exporting Countries Forum. On now to the Secretary General International Energy Forum as I welcome His Excellency Joseph McMonigal.
Dear Excellencies, esteemed participants, ladies and gentlemen, I thank His Excellency the Honorable Minister Silva for inviting me and the International Energy Forum to offer some thoughts to mark the start of this important forum on the decade of gas toward a gas-powered economy by 2030. I also look forward to working with Minister Silva and the Federal Republic of Nigeria as co-host of the IEF 17 ministerial meeting uh, late this year when I hope we will welcome many of you to the world's largest gathering of energy ministers in Riyadh. There, our dialogue will focus on regaining market stability, accelerating the recovery, and advancing the energy transition in the aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic. As you know, the pandemic created the biggest demand shock in history last year, bringing with it unprecedented volatility in energy markets, including natural gas. In fact, demand for natural gas fell last year, but it is expected to recover progressively in the coming years. Longer term, natural gas is expected to remain one of the world's primary energy sources, accounting for one quarter of the mix by the middle of the century, according to major outlooks. Natural gas is regarded as the fuel of choice to enable successful transitions in emerging market economies that will lead the global recovery. As a cleaner alternative to other fossil fuels, natural gas offers the developing world a real chance to meet the twin goals of reducing emissions and widening popular access to power. Nowhere is this more relevant than Nigeria, Africa's most populous nation, which has had abundant gas resources, but it has also faced challenges on the power side of the equation. Nigeria's Decade of Gas initiative is aimed at addressing this issue head on. The IAF is committed to supporting our members' efforts to utilize readily available gas resources, build new infrastructure, and develop technologies to deliver smart, stable, and secure electricity. I look forward to hearing more about Nigeria's plans to become a gas-powered economy by 2030, and again, offer my deep appreciation for including the International Energy Forum in today's event. Thank you very much, His Excellency Joseph McMoneyville. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, of course you know in our industry, when we say a particular international company is sponsoring an event, because of the senior JV partnership of the NNPC, they are also sponsors. So please let's give NNPC a big round of applause as um, being sponsors with the Nigerian LNG at this event. From international energy organizations to an international LNG company, let's now welcome Managing Director Nigeria LNG for his own goodwill, Mr. Tony Atal. Your Excellency, our President, President Muhammadu Buhari, GCFR, the Honorable Minister of State for Petroleum, Chief Timmy Pre Silva, the Group Managing Director of NMPC, members of the National Assembly, other Excellencies and Captains of Industry here present today, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, please permit me to stand on the already established protocol for today's history-making event focusing on gas as the next logical pathway to Nigeria's glory. Let me start by expressing our profound gratitude to Mr. President, whose presence here today signifies his continued commitment to the sustainable future of Nigeria. May I also offer congratulations to the Federal Ministry of Petroleum Resources and indeed NMPC for this decade of gas initiative, noting that it takes a great deal of vision and indeed courage to make this kind of declaration as it heralds enormous positive changes to the Nigerian economy. Ladies and gentlemen, our world is fast changing. We are set 
to add another 2 billion people to the world by 2040 to become over 9 billion people on this earth. On the back of this population growth and the much anticipated growth in human prosperity, energy demand is expected to grow by more than 30 percent. Essentially, the world needs more energy, but the world needs it cleaner and cheaper to manage, but it also needs it cleaner and cheaper to manage climate change and the two degrees centigrade challenge through decarbonization. Energy transition has since begun, resulting in massive change in the global energy mix. While renewable sources are gaining prominence to replace coal and other forms of fossil fuel, gas is set to become the fastest growing transition fuel into the future. Global natural gas consumption is also forecasted and projected to increase by more than 40% by 2050. Now, this is a great opportunity for Nigeria. Nigeria is blessed with plenty of gas reserves, 200 TCFs of proof reserved at the P2 level and an additional 600 TCF scope to be proven by SEC rules. Proving the 600 TCF will move us to number four in the world from the current ninth position, which I believe should be a key objective for this decade of gas agenda. Essentially, Nigeria is a gas nation, as we have by far more gas than oil on a BOE basis. Nigeria currently plays a significant role in the global energy sector, holding the position of the largest oil and gas producer in Africa and the sixth largest supplier of global LNG through the operations of Nigeria LNG Limited. Our train seven project alone will attract about $10 billion into the country with very significant revenue generation for government and our shareholders in addition to over 12,000 jobs opportunity for Nigerians. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the decade of gas. Another decade of sustained operations in Nigeria LNG. A decade of trend seven and perhaps trend eight, nine, and 10. A decade of elimination of gas flaring. A decade of more domestic LPG in households in Nigeria and overall the decade of a fully gas-powered Nigerian economy. As I stated at the beginning, this will require solid collaborative efforts and the active participation of all stakeholders, including the National Assembly, currently working the Petroleum Industry Bill, PIB. The PIB, I dare say, unilaterally holds the ace to be one of the biggest opportunities for our gas future as a nation and we should not miss this opportunity for any reason. Ladies and gentlemen, gas is power and energy. Gas is transport, as in auto gas. Gas is petrochemicals, as per feedstock. Gas is manufacturing and industries. Gas is food from fertilizer. Gas is jobs and employment. Matter of fact, gas is everything for Nigeria. We must use what we have to get what we want. Saudi Arabia and Dubai use oil to move their economies to becoming one of the best in the world. Qatar has used only gas to transform from a fishing economy to becoming a global gas giant. Nigeria, on the other hand, has both oil and gas. However, Nigeria has thus far ridden on the back of oil for over 50 years. But now the time has come for Nigeria to fly on the wings of gas. That is why at Nigeria LNG, we believe it is time to unleash Nigeria's gas potential through this decade of gas initiative. And that is partly why we also say it is time for gas. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the decade of gas. I thank you for your kind attention. Thank you all. From the back of gas to the wings of, at back of oil to the wings of gas, we thank you, Mr. Tonietta.
Managing Director and Andrea LNG. Your Excellency, we're going on now to the ministerial address as I welcome the Honorable Minister of State Petroleum Resources, His Excellency, Chief Timmy Perry Silva. Your Excellency, President Muhammad Buhari, President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and Minister of Petroleum, the Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Petroleum, the GMD NMPC, the Director DPR, the Managing Director, the CEOs of Shell, Total LNG, and all the captains of industries that are here, the ES and CDMB. Let me safely rest on the protocols already established. On behalf of the Federal Ministry of Petroleum Resources and the Minister of Petroleum, President Muhammad Buhari, I warmly welcome you to the Decade of Gas Development Conference. This is a pre-conference event of the Nigeria International Petroleum Summit Hybrid with the objective of creating the roadmap for the federal government of Nigeria's aspiration of using its vast natural resources to put Nigeria in the league of top industrialized nations over the next decade. Nigeria's gas reserves, with proven 203 TCF and potential 600, and 600 TCF, are the most extensive in Africa and in the top 10 globally. However, in the area of domestic utilization of gas to power the economy, there is a chronic shortage. This is a narrative we intend to change over the next decade. Before I go on with the Decade of Gas Development Initiative, we need to take stock of the achievements of the year 2020, which was the year of gas, a forerunner to this current initiative. To demonstrate the federal government commitment with the year of gas in 2020. We did not allow COVID-19 pandemic, which literally grounded economies across the world to deter us. Thus, in the year 2020, the Nigeria LNG, a venture partnership between the Federal Government of Nigeria and international oil majors, closed the deal on the $10 billion train seven gas expansion project expected to lift Nigeria's LNG output by more than 30 percent. The Ajaukuta Kaduna Kano AKK pipeline, a 614 kilometer long natural gas project estimated to cost $2.8 billion, was also kick started. The AKK project is government's decisive response to the infrastructural deficit in the gas sector. Still in the year 2020, Nigeria's gas flare commercialization program, a deliberate strategy to focus on natural gas, shortlisted 200 companies to bid for the development of 45 flare sites. On the policy side, the Nigerian Gas Transportation Network Code, which aims at enhancing the availability and affordability of domestic gas, was launched. The code seeks to create guidelines for agreements between gas sellers, transporters, and buyers. The government also put in place the National Gas Expansion Program and the Auto Gas Policy all in the bid to stimulate economic growth, further improve Nigeria's energy mix, drive investments, 
and provide jobs in the country. Let me remind you that President Muhammad Buhari's administration for industrialization with the country's vast natural gas resources is a deliberate and well thought out plan. If you remember the economic recovery and growth plan of this administration revolves around the utilization of natural gas. The four priority areas enunciated in the ERGP are energy, energy sufficiency, transportation, agriculture, manufacturing and industrialization. The common denominator is natural gas as it is the major fuel for power generation, transportation, and key ingredient for manufacturing fertilizer, which is required for agriculture. Natural gas derivatives of petrochemical products aid manufacturing and industrialization. It is no longer acceptable that despite the country's vast natural gas resources, the gap between electricity supply and demand is huge. Access unreliable and cost expensive. We must deal with the energy poverty in this country. We must find a way to unlock the natural gas potential of this great nation and drag over 120 million of our people out of energy poverty. What do we intend to achieve at the end of this summit? For me, nothing less than a robust roadmap will do. A roadmap that I will lead the team personally to present to Mr. President and stoutly defend. There will be challenges, no doubt, but I can assure you that President Muhammad Buhari has the political will to surmount the challenges and continue in a determined pursuit of transforming Nigeria into a gas-based industrialized nation. I cannot conclude this address without a word of commendation for the Nigeria LNG Limited, our partners for this decade of gas development conference. They are proven to be a good corporate system and a great ally with the Ministry of Petroleum Resources and the Federal Republic of Nigeria. While wishing you all a successful deliberation, I look forward to personally welcoming you again in June for the fourth edition of Nigeria International Petroleum Summit. Thank you, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, thank you very much, His Excellency Chief Jimmy Pierre Silva, Honorable Minister of State uh, Petroleum Resources, telling us on how the ministry is, is going to power the economy in this decade of gas. Your Excellencies, very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, when I'm switching from the Honorable Minister of State to the Minister of Petroleum himself for his address. Join me in welcoming virtually from the Asorog Villa, His Excellency Mohamedou Buhari, GCFR, President, Federal Republic of Nigeria and Minister of Petroleum Resources. Your Excellency, Mr. President, the stage is all yours. Chief of Staff to the President, Honorable Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Honorable Ministers present, Heads of National and International Oil and Gas Organizations present, Development Partners, Senior Government Officials, Distinguished Ladies and Gentlemen, it is with pleasure that I welcome you to the Decade of Gas conference organized as a pre-summit conference of the forthcoming edition of the Nigerian International Petroleum Summit. 
It is well known that Nigeria is a gas nation with little oil. <coughs> but the country has focused on oil over the years. That is the paradox that this administration decided to confront when we declared their 2020 as the year of gas in Nigeria. It was a bold statement to demonstrate the resolve of this administration that gas development and utilization should be a national priority to stimulate economic growth, further improve Nigeria's energy mix, drive investments, and provide the much needed jobs for our citizens in the country. Before the declaration of their 2020 at the year of gas, this administration had shown commitment to the development of Nigeria's vast gas resources and strengthening of the gas value chain by reviewing and gathering policies and regulations to enhance operations in the sector as encapsulated in the gas policy of 2017. Our major objective for gas sector is to transform Nigeria into an industrialized nation with gas playing a major role and we demonstrated this through enhanced accelerated gas revolution. Remarkable progress has been made to achieve this objective. This includes developing gas infrastructure, promoting domestic utilization of LPG and CNG, commencing the process of commercializing gas flares, development of industrial and transport gas markets, and increasing gas to power. We also kick-started other policies and projects like the natural gas expansion program, auto gas policy, and the construction of the 614 kilometer Ajakuta Kano gas pipeline. After a thorough review of these laudable achievements and successes in the gas space, we acknowledge that Nigeria has still more work to do in the gas space. This has led the federal government to begin a more proactive push towards gas development. This initiative will ensure further optimal exploitation and utilization of country's gas resources. Gas has enormous potential to diversify and uplift Nigeria's economy, given the country's potential of about 600 trillion cubic feet of gas and the rising global demand for cleaner energy sources has offered Nigeria an, an opportunity to exploit gas resources for the good of the country. We intend to see this opportunity. To actualize the dream of the transforming Nigeria with its massive gas resources requires the collaboration of government with the necessary stakeholders. It is against this background that I commend the collaboration between the Federal Ministry of Petroleum Resources, Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, and the Nigerian LNG Limited for this official conference of the Decade of Gas Development for Nigeria. The NLNG is the federal government's arrowhead in the production of gas, in the reduction of gas flaring in Nigeria. Nigeria LNG contributes 
about 1% to GDP and has contributed 114 billion United States dollars in revenues over the years. 9 billion United States dollars in taxes, 18 billion United States dollars in dividends to the federal government, 15 billion United States dollars in feed gas purchases, and all these were achieved with 100% Nigerian management and 95% Nigerian workforce. In 2020, Nigeria LNG won the award for outstanding business strategy for going ahead with trade selling during the global pandemic. Global developments have indeed presented us an opportunity. Gas will become the dominant fuel for generating power, not only across the world, but in Africa as well. The question now is, can we rise up to the challenge? The Ministry of Petroleum Resources and the NNPC are in various regards setting the pace. I would like to change all other relevant, to charge all other relevant MDAs on the need to partner with the international oil companies, the indigenous oil companies, and financial institutions to actualize the dream of fully utilizing our gas resources to uplift our economy. Later this year, we'll host the fourth Nigeria International Petroleum Summit in Abuja. This flagship event of the Ministry of Petroleum Resources will once more allow us to engage our partners and friends from around the world to exchange ideas and policy options and set the tone for the industry in the next few years. I would like to use this opportunity to formally invite you all to join us. It is my privilege and honor to now launch the Decade of Gas Agenda and to declare this summit open. I wish you fruitful deliberations. Thank you, and God bless us all. Shall we now rise to the national anthem, please? the Fair Republic of Nigeria, and God bless Mr. President and the Minister of Petroleum Resources for leading the nation and the ministry in the path of gas development. Thank you, Your Excellency. Can you please give him another round of applause? <clears throat> we may be seated, Your Excellencies, in the room with ladies and gentlemen. We may be seated. We may be seated. With that departure of Mr. President from the Council Chambers of the Presidential Villa, we are moving on to the plenary sessions of the conference.
But before I get into that plenary session, the first plenary session, what we're looking at, the decade of gas, a strategic relevance to the economy. Take two other items before we get to that. The first one being a showcase short documentary on the Nigeria LNG. You've heard the president himself describe the Nigerian LNG as federal government's arrowhead for gas development. And of course, confirming that this same company has contributed billions of dollars to the coffers of the Nigerian Federation. For the next five minutes, please keep your eyes on the screen and let's take you on a five minute journey into the Nigerian LNG history. When the world thinks of energy and Nigeria, it thinks of the nation's vast reserves that have helped power the global economy, improving the lives of hundreds of millions of people over many decades. But the way energy is currently provided and used is contributing to climate change. And whilst the output and efficiency of emerging energy sources are increasing rapidly, global energy demand is growing at an even faster rate. A reliable energy source is still needed to guarantee consistency of supply. It's time to turn the spotlight on Nigeria's most abundant energy resource and the smart choice for the future, natural gas. For more than 20 years, Nigeria LNG has demonstrated gas's potential as a compelling energy frontier for the nation. And now, NLNG takes centre stage as a catalyst for the Nigerian federal government's landmark initiative, the Decade of Gas. Highlights of the company's many outstanding successes have included helping to reduce flaring from the country's oil operations from 65% to 12%, becoming one of the world's largest LNG, meeting significant global energy demand, and providing a major source of foreign earnings for the nation. A Nigerian company that's built a world-class reputation for safety, reliability and excellence. And built it with a 100% homegrown and diverse management team. A team that now stands ready to lead Nigeria through the energy transition with confidence, both at home and on a global stage. As we look to preserve our planet for the next generation, developing a sustainable energy mix for the future, we need to build an energy bridge to that future. A bridge powered by abundant supplies of cleaner, cheaper, reliable natural gas. With Nigeria LNG at its core. With construction of Train 7 underway and plans for further trains in the future, Nigeria will boost its production of LNG by 35% attracting some $10 billion in foreign direct investment, driving Nigerian content development as it fosters enterprise and opportunity along the gas value chain. Providing more than 12,000 new jobs at the peak of construction and ramping up supplies of domestic cooking gas to homes and businesses. And being a major force for good with many social investments in our host communities such as Bonnie Community Health Insurance Program, Bonnie Malaria Elimination Program and the construction of the Bonnie Bodo Road, one of the country's biggest CSR projects to link Bonnie Island to the mainland. with abundant supplies of cleaner, cheaper and reliable energy. Fertilizing food production, lighting up our communities, roads and powering our railways. And transforming the lives of millions of Nigerians. And as we continue to support the growth and development of the sustainable energies of the future, 
the value of gas will also continue to grow as the smart partner for that sustainable future. A low to net zero carbon world is now a real possibility. For Nigeria, for Africa, for humanity. At Nigeria LNG, we're committed to the decade of gas, helping us all to find the light at the end of the tunnel. A beacon committed to our vision. A global LNG company helping to build a better Nigeria. global energy company helping to build a better Nigeria. Can we put our hands together, ladies and gentlemen, one more time for the Nigeria LNG. I'd like to recognize the presence of the Executive Secretary of PEF, uh, Mr. Ahmed Baboy. Good morning, sir. Thank you for being here. God, please give him a round of applause. Thank you. Uh, we're, also joined, we're also joined by the managing director of Nigerian Port Authority, um, Hadiza Bala Usman, who is represented by the General Manager Abu Elaizun Office, Mr. Edward Dauda Kabil. Mr. Kabil, we welcome you. Thank you for being with us. Your Excellencies, very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment is unable to join us this morning to deliver a keynote but he has sent in a representative who will be speaking on his behalf. Let's welcome Mr. Kamar Bakin. Good morning. Uh, Honorable Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I bring greetings from the Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment, and indeed the entire industrial sector, which is delighted at the prospect of fully harnessing the potential that gas presents for Nigeria's industrialization. We believe that gas can become a source of competitive advantage for Nigeria's manufacturing sector and the strong lever for its positioning as the preferred manufacturing hub in Africa. Important, as we implement measures that can leapfrog us to the front of the line as a destination for manufacturing for the rest of Africa. The manufacturing sector has the potential of becoming Nigeria's dominant job creator, a viable source of foreign exchange and the channel for long-term economic security. An affordable source of gas is one of the enablers for realizing this vision. We have been in deliberations with the Ministry of Petroleum Resources on how to improve the availability and the cost of gas for the manufacturing sector, and I trust this is one of the issues this conference will discuss and hopefully address. Uh, it is the pleasure of the, uh, an honor of the Honorable Minister to have been provided the opportunity to say a few words at this occasion. I wish all the speakers and participants a remarkably successful event. Thank you very much, and God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you very much, the representative of the Honorable Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Mr. Kamar Bakrin. Thank you so very much. Your Excellencies, very distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so we're going into our very first plenary on the decade of gas, its strategic relevance to the economy. The Honorable Minister of State has charged these August gathering to have a robust conversation and has assured us that he will be leading the charge in taking it to Mr. President and has also told us that Mr. President, as we all are aware, has the political will to drive whatever comes out of our meeting. Okay, so to kickstart this robust conversation, I'd like to begin by welcoming our panelists. 
Let me welcome the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of Nigeria LNG, Mr. Tony Atta. He is on the panel. Also on the panel is the Group Managing Director of the NNPC. Welcome, Mr. Kiari F. Nape. Also on the panel is the Chairman, Oil Producer Street Section of the CCI and Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of Total ENP in Nigeria, Mr. Mike Sangster. Agassimbi, <laughs> should I add Chief to the name today? Chief Mike Sangster. You're welcome, sir. And of course, the President, Nigerian Gas Association, and Managing Director, Shell Nigerian Gas, is also on the panel. Mr. Ed Ubong, you're welcome. <laughs> Moderating this panel for us is the partner, West Africa Corporate Finance Leader for Deloitte and Torch. We welcome Bola Adigun. Bola, you're welcome. As Bola makes her way to take charge for this session, I just want to quickly recognize the official gender partners for NIPS, and that is the CBWN, the Commonwealth Business Network Nigeria, whose vice chairperson is in the room, Ngozi Oyewole. Ngozi, where are you? Good morning. Good morning, Ngozi. Good morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, so is over to our moderator at this time. Bola, the show is yours. Good morning, everyone. Um, it's a big pleasure to be here. And um, with me is a very highly esteemed panelist. We couldn't have a better team to discuss this topic. And our topic is um, Decade of Gas is Strategic Relevance to Us. Um, I would give each panelist about two minutes to give their opening statements, and after which, we'll go into the discussion proper. Um, for this, I think I'll start with the MV of LNG. Statement over to you, sir. Honorable Minister, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, uh, I think in my uh, opening remarks uh, we sort of establish what film. At Nigeria LNG, we feel there's no better time for Nigeria to harness and tap into this God given resource. As you heard, we have. With the potential to move from number nine to number four in the global world of reserves. When chips are down, you want to talk to the top five in the world. And for us at Nigeria LNG, today we have 22 million tons capacity. If you look around the world, for 200 TCF and 2 million tons, there's a lot of opportunity there. I look at Australia with less than 150, about 150 TCF, they have 88 million tons. I look at Indonesia with about 70 TCF, they have 3 million tons. You can say the same for Malaysia, but then I look at Qatar. Qatar was two years ahead of us, just 24 months between their first train and our first train. Today, Qatar is 77 million tons capacity. To the extent that with the Shell Revolution, America has arrived, targeting 100 million tons per annum, chasing number one position. But today, Australia at 89 million tons, number one. Qatar became number two. But we made very positive move. With the Trans-7 project, we are set to add 35 capacity to move from what is 22 million tons to 30 and we were very excited about that. My shareholders are here, and uh, we are talking train seven. We were so excited, but knowing that we are going from 22 million tons to 30 million tons, only to hear what Qatar wants to do. Qatar wants to add 30 million tons on top of her 77 million tons. That's when we started to feel small. 
Essentially, our total existence after we build train 7 at 30 million tons is Qatar's incremental volume to be added. That's why we believe that train 7 is no longer ambitious. Train 7 alone is no longer ambitious. But the way to enable train 7, 8, 9, and 10 is to actually do a lot in the upstream by accelerating development of the gas from upstream, proving that 600 TCF moving Nigeria from the ninth position today to the fourth position if we are going to have a fighting chance of using gas as that pathway to Nigeria's glory. As we say in Nigeria LNG, there's still a lot of coal in Enugu, and the risk is if we do nothing, 2050, 2070, we we'll all look back and say there's a lot of gas, there's a lot of oil in Nigeria, but to what use? I think the time is now. It's time for gas, as we say in Nigeria LNG. Let me hold it here. Thank you very much, sir, for your opening statement. I think I'll go to the GMD of NNPC to give his opening statement. Thank you. Thank you very much, John. Uh, I think it's uh, appropriate to say we are late, uh, and we haven't focused on gas uh, throughout the history of oil and gas operation in our country. Uh, we can give any excuse. Uh, essentially around issues of uh, having the right fiscal framework, uh, absence of domestic market, and so on. Uh, none of them is sufficient to explain the very fact that today this country with huge gas resources today is actually just at its starting point. Yes, it is late, but something can be done. And I would believe that uh, with the massive um, uh, energy that we are putting on this uh, currently, and all the commitments, both political and, and economic, and with the relative understanding that we're starting to see from our partners, and let me be blunt, I told Chairman Shell now that uh, uh, our partners over time have never seen domestic gas as a business. And you can give any excuse, but the reality today is that uh, we're under supply in the domestic market. We're under supply on energy, particularly power, and the net result is that we're seeing the level of uh, economic uh, difficulties that we're having in this country. And this industry could have done very different. We didn't do, but I think this is a challenge that we have today, aligning with the objective of the decade of gas to make sure that gas, which is the easy source of energy, and not only the easy source of energy, it has the capacity to transform our economy, bring in more jobs, more taxes uh, of different nature. Um, when you say taxes, uh, oil and gas company will start thinking of petroleum profit. No, that's not what I mean. Uh, you can create jobs, you can create god bless industries, and ultimately other forms of taxation can come in and can grow our country. I think it's a big challenge for our partners in particular, uh, who produce about 80% of the total oil in this country, to also be responsible for 80% of domestic gas delivery in, the, in our market. So it's very critical that we do this so that we put on a balanced basis to say that, yes, we are doing well. But we also have our role, uh, Honorable Minister is here, uh, as government, government must also do a, take a few steps. Uh, one of them is the petroleum industry bill, which is in process. Uh, but beyond that, you know, there are other uh, relationship issues that are on ground and also other technical issues about collection of revenues. And I'm also aware, and I can inform this very informed audience that work have been done to make sure that when you put your money into gas, you can get your money back and with your margin. And we understand this, but that didn't keep us from not investing in gas over the years. This is a very, very recent development. And I'm trying this challenge as industry that we need to take the next step. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. I'll go to the MD of Total EMP for his opening remarks. Thank you. Good morning, Honourable Minister. Good morning, everyone. Distinguished guests. Yeah. I think I'm actually here representing the OPTS, so I'm wearing two hats today, uh, even though I don't have actually a physical hat on. So. <laughs> um, yeah, thank, you. thank you for this opportunity. I think um, we've seen, yeah, I have a, a few slides. If we could go to the, maybe to the next slide. And the next one, please. I mean, I think we've seen many figures this morning about the, uh, the quantity of resources that, uh, of gas resources that Nigeria has. This is one, I think, from the BP Statistical Review, number nine, 190 uh, TCF. Yeah, but we've heard that it could be even much more than that. You know, not 17th and uh, 9th in terms of the, uh, the reserves, but only 17th in terms of production. So clearly, you know, the resources are there, but the challenge is to find how we put them into production. Next slide. 
And this is a chart showing the demand, the demand for gas historically and going forward for the next few years. So we can see a very small uh, export, uh, export pipeline gas. Domestic demand has been fairly, uh, has actually fallen according to this over the last couple of years and is forecast to grow slightly. And we see the impact of, uh, of the LNG exports, which I mean, uh, Tony has already spoken about this morning, and the increase with, uh, with Train 7. But according to my calculations, I think at the moment, Nigeria is only producing every year 1% of its resources. Based on the 190 TCF figure, it's only 1% of the resources being produced every year. So clearly there's a potential to go much higher. Next slide. Now this is quite a complex slide, I think, for this forum, but essentially we're looking at this and on this chart here, the dark green bars are the resources for various countries in Africa and different parts of the world, and the light green bars are the investments that were committed over recent years. And we can see that Nigeria stands out on the left as being the largest, have the largest resources of oil and gas, but has only attracted 4% of investment over, uh, over recent years. So clearly, you know, we need to address that, I think, as, as companies and as industry and, as, and with the authorities to find a way to attract more funds and more investment in, uh, in, in Nigeria. And we've heard this morning from the from His Excellency the President, uh, from the Minister, from the GMD, various initiatives which are underway to try and, uh, to try and achieve that. Next slide, please. And again, this is something I came across which I think is quite interesting. It just compares the, the gas infrastructure in the, in the Niger Delta Basin here in Nigeria compared to what there is in the North Sea. And you can just see quite visually the difference in the level of infrastructure. So I think the potential is clearly there, but we'll need to find a way to, make, uh, to, get, these, uh, to get the infrastructure in place and to, get the, and to get the gas developed. Next slide. Again, just a few, a few thoughts from an industry perspective in terms of what, uh, what needs to be done to help this. I mean, I think there is a need for infrastructure investment. We, I think we need to generate, generate the demand for gas, whether it's pipelines, whether it's power generation, and so on and so forth. And we need to address some issues that have been, I think, in terms of funding, the upstream funding, the, uh, the joint ventures. There have been some payment challenges in terms of the, uh, the power market, which if that was resolved, I think that would help to stimulate more investment. And obviously, uh, I think the, the PIB, I think, is a great opportunity really to stimulate the investment in gas. And I think it's an opportunity really to put in place a governance system and a, phys a fiscal system which really, um, you know, which really encourages investment both in the midstream and in the upstream of the, of the gas market. And I think as well, it's, it's, it's the right opportunity to really develop an overall conducive uh, business environment for the, for the industry. But my final slide, you know, we would, we would, I think as industry, we'd like to see a transition towards a, a kind of willing buyer, willing seller market, a free, a free market. Um, and again, just to use the analogy with the, with, the, with the United States of America, we saw there that when they discovered shale gas, back in the early 2000s. We saw a massive investment in the industry, but not just in the upstream, also in, the, in, the, uh, in all the uses of gas. And the US has become again now a much bigger industrial player in many areas of petrochemicals and, uh, and, and, and even, even manufacturing. So I think the, uh, the opportunity is there. Um, we, 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 we do have some issues, I think, with, with deep water, which we'd like to address through the PIB, which I think would encourage I think some royalty relief in the early years of deep water projects we think would encourage even investment in the deep water side of the gas and also I think in the uh, non-associated gas field as well needs some, need some, um, some fiscal incentives to really encourage the, uh, the, uh, the investment. So I think we are, I think as an industry we are encouraged, we see the potential of gas in the country and I think if we can work constructively with the uh, authorities and industry as a whole we can really Bring, bring Nigeria up the, the table in terms of the uh, gas production as well as gas reserves. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello. Uh, good morning, Honorable uh, Minister of State for Petroleum, uh, another distinguished uh, gentleman. I think in, in sort of opening on behalf of the Nigerian Gas Association, it, it's always worth stepping back and saying Nigeria is ranked ninth in terms of gas uh, reserves. Yeah, but what does that really mean? It means that if, if, for instance, we decided to continue to produce gas 
at 2019 or 2020 levels, it will take us about 300 years to run that sort of reserves. But in the current energy transition, we don't have 300 years. Uh, and that's why when uh, Tony and the GMD saw the need to accelerate consumption, it's, it's a pertinent need. We are ninth in terms of reserves, but like the OPTS chairman spoke about, when you look at production levels, we then move from top 10 to top 20. Uh, but I will add additional statistics to that. If you then talk about consumption, the real driver for economic development, Nigeria ranks top 50. And I think that is the size and scale of work that needs to be done. Uh, there's been a lot of energy, a lot of initiatives driven by the Honorable Minister. And we in the Nigerian Gas Association were really excited because we've not had this sort of energy in a long while. Uh, and we are fully connected to sort of see how we can drive and support the government to achieve the key goals in the next decade of gas. In living, I would like to say that gas can help Nigeria to meet nine of the 17 SDG goals as defined by the UN, specifically for Africa. It's a single most important lever to drive economic development over the next 10 years. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, thank you for all the opening statements. In the interest of our time, I would go through each panelist and I'll ask two questions. Um, permit me to start with the MD of NLNG. Um, you realize that there has been limited integration in the supply process for CNG, LPG, and uh, LNG, which is as a result of the limited rail and marine transport infrastructure. My question to you, sir, is how has the LNG managed in the past with the distribution of its LPG products nationwide in Nigeria 1? And the second question is, do we see a future where the domestic gas market would be a critical focus area for the LNG? What you, sir? Thank you for the question. Um, first of all, let me confirm that of all the panelists, I'm the only one who buys gas. <laughs> so they produce, I buy. And uh, so the question on infrastructure is uh, one that I fully support so that they can produce more for me, as you would expect, the more I can, the more trends we can, uh, we can develop. But when you touch on LPG, we have a long history with LPG. Uh, I was the former president, uh, President Olusha Gwabasanjo, who in 2007, invited Nigeria LNG to contribute LPG into Nigeria. Prior to that time, all our LPG was exported. But painfully, the national capacity for LPG consumption was only 50,000 tons at the time. But we then started to bring LPG into country, and I'm proud to say, as of last year, we brought in over 350,000 tons, which has helped scale the sector to the extent that for the first time, Nigeria's consumption was at a million tons of LPG last year with our support. But where, when you look at the, the opportunities and indeed the capacity of Nigeria to use more LPG in country, the work we did with a consulting firm uh, within the office of the Vice President is the fact that the national potential for LPG in the domestic space is about three to five million tons per annum. And it's the first time we hit one million tons since 2007. So we are ready to continue to bring LPG into country to the extent that we went to the board, and I'm happy that uh, some of my directors and shareholders are here. Once we hit 350, we went to the board to say we need to increase capacity, and the board has uh, graciously approved that we scale to 450 to the extent that we are looking at bringing whatever we produce. So we're not directly involved in the full value chain. We are really in the supply space, making sure that LPG is available in the first instance and ensuring that the other uh, sectors that rely on our feed are able to, to develop. Um, that is the much we do, but in terms of interconnectivity between the respective streams of the products, we are involved in LPG, in LNG, and in condensate. Today, 100% of the condensate is exported, 100% of the LNG is exported. I just talked about LPG, 
coming into country, partly still being exported because what is of value today in country is butane. And we have a lot of pen, uh, propane, which does not have a lot of call from country, so we still need to scale. And once you industrialize, more utilization of propane will come and we can bring more propane. But we also recognize the energy gap in the country, especially uh, from the standpoint of power, to the extent that just last year the borders approved that we can bring some LNG into country as well. And I think for us that is a massive contribution that is consistent with our vision of being a global player on the one hand, helping to build a better Nigeria on the other hand. So LNG is coming into country as domestic LNG as well. Thank you very much, sir. My next set of questions is to the GMD NNPC. Sir, the government has set uh, an impressive target of having a gas-powered economy by 2030. Um, my question to you, sir, is who should, be who should be championing this initiative? Should it be private sector based or from the government, one? And secondly, what is the role NAPC itself is playing in helping to actualize this impressive target? Over to you, sir. Thanks very much. Uh, first, uh, uh, you need to get policy right. And I think we are at the threshold of getting policy around gas production, gas sales. And that's what typically means the pricing. We're getting that right. So once you have the fiscal framework right, then the rest becomes business. Because uh, investors will see the opportunities. They will put money. The banks will see the opportunities because you can recover your costs and make a margin. That's what matters to business people. But we as a nation, we have another dimension to this which is that we are seeing gas as a source of uh, development for our country, creating property, creating jobs. And that can only come when the investments work, so that uh, we, uh, we did the right fiscal framework, and then the investors are able to put their money into it, and obviously uh, you will see that connection uh, come up. But when you say, who is going to do this? Uh, because I've said it is uh, We as NNPC, we have two levels of intervention in this. One is we are partner to most of the major oil producing companies in this country, either on the platform of the joint venture arrangements that we have with them or on the PSC. So we have very, very vested interest in making sure that uh, gas is delivered into in this, uh, in this businesses. Then secondly, as a standalone entity, NMPC has its own upstream company called the Nigerian Petroleum Development Company, which is literally uh, what we run ourselves. As we can see today, uh, we are almost displacing one of our major partners in being the largest supplier of gas into the domestic market, uh, with respect. And therefore, NDC's role is, is to move forward, uh, accelerate and create the competition with the right fiscal framework that will be on ground and it's already on the ground, so that others will actually do the chasing and not necessarily begging people to come into business because we have seen opportunities same business, but also vested interest with our partners. Uh, and I've made that very clear uh, much earlier and in very many conversations with our partners that uh, we have to come back, we are putting our money into everything, and we must put our money into gas so that uh, once we can show a line of sight around recovery of your costs and benefits, then we'll see no reason for any hesitation. So we, we come from many fronts, uh, uh, and of course, uh, uh, with the right incentives that will be on ground today. And we can see this, you know, with the PIB, and I'm sure even by indicative position in the PIB, as probably given the passage of the National Assembly, we know that the fiscal conditions are very different from what we have today. It will spur investment, and, and ultimately uh, that drive will naturally come because it will be business. Of course, there are other issues we are trying to resolve around recovery of power and the ability of our customers to pay for the cost of gas. This may be the biggest drag that we have, but I'm also aware and I'm also very uh, intimately, intimately aware that uh, things are being done to resolve that. So it's a question of very short time, not question of time, very question of very short time that we're getting across here. But now we have traction and I see no issues around uh, any concern of whether or not anyone will drive it, but it will be driven. Actually, it will, in another year, it will be self-driven. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. My next round of questions uh, is to the MD of Total, EMP. So there's a paradox that Africa is resource rich yet energy deficient. Uh, like you rightly showed in your slides, there's need for Africa to, and even Nigeria, to attract a lot more investment to maximize and optimize our gas resources. 
in your visa, the critical success factors for us to attract the right financing at the right price uh, and right terms, and from where do you see this finance coming from? That's one. The second question is, as the chairman of OPTS, would you encourage your members to go into Greenfield uh, LNG projects? Over to you, sir. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you for those questions. Um, let me take the second one first, if I may. And you put me in a really difficult, conflictual position here because I'm sitting <laughs> next to the, to the MD of Nigeria LNG in which Total is a shareholder. So I'm clearly going to say that I think a brownfield development is better than a greenfield development. And I think that's true in many, in many jurisdictions around the world that we can see within the, the, the cost of adding additional capacity is lower if you can utilize some of the existing, uh, existing utilities, existing, existing facilities. So I think expanding existing plants, I think, is the, is the most economic uh, way to, to add capacity and add it more quickly. Um, I think in terms of, you know, yeah, yeah the country is, is resource rich and uh, yeah, we need to stimulate investment, we need to develop the, uh, the resources, I think, both for the domestic market and for the, and for the export market. So I think the, the subject has been discussed a couple of times already this morning. I mean, the GMD just mentioned it. I mean, I think we need an attractive, uh, a stable business environment and a, an attractive, uh, a competitive fiscal regime. And I think the investment will come. No one doubts the... Uh, the quantity of resources that, that, that we have here in Nigeria. It's really all about uh, having the right regulatory regime which, which makes people want to continue to, uh, to invest. And where will the investment come from? And given the, the resources, I think, you know, that, I mean, we need to look at all different sources of investment. I mean, clearly, local companies will want to continue to invest. And that could also be in the midstream and in the downstream markets, power generation and, uh, and so on and so forth. The international companies, I think, need to be a big, a big part of that as well for the, for the larger projects to bring the strengths of the balance sheet to develop these uh, resources. And obviously, as well, external financing. You know, if we have a stable... I mean, again, speaking as, uh, as Total, we would love to invest as well in, uh, in renewables in Nigeria, but the challenge so far is having a, uh, a bankable uh, power purchase agreement. So I think if there's that kind of ability to sell forward uh, gas on a, on a long-term basis, you know, banks will be willing as well, I'm sure, to come in and to finance some of the new investments. Thank you very much. And then the last but not the least, my question is to the President of the Nigerian Gas Association. Um, so we have 2030 target of having a gas-powered economy. My question to you, sir, is how are your members uh, responding to this target? Is it just another rhetoric? Is there some optimism or skepticism on their part? Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, moderator. I think it's uh, going to be clear there is a lot of excitement and a lot of optimism. I mean, we, we're the largest broad sector holder group representing gas. But I will, I will sort of put a word of caution. And that's around the fact that most of our members are also private investors. Uh, they want to put money in gas development. They want a healthy return. But more importantly, back to what GMB had mentioned, they also want to see a clear framework that is sustainable, that underpins the investments that they do today to be able to sort of achieve that 2030 goal. And maybe it's then sort of zeroing back onto what is important and uh, sort of mentioned this to the Honorable Minister. Frankly, the most important thing is what happens between now and 2023. If we don't get it right, the right structure in the PIB, the right structure in the pricing, then we're going to have to declare another decade, come another 10 years. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. I think you would agree with me that our panelists have done justice to our topic. Uh, decade of gas is strategically relevant to, to the economy. Uh, I would like to say a big thank you to all of the panelists, GMD and NPC, MD and LNG, MD Total, and uh, the President of the National Association. Thank you very much. Just, just hold, on, hold on one second, uh, Bola. We, we have an online question. Um, I was hoping perhaps you could... Um, you and your panel, in the time that is left, do just, can I go ahead? Please go ahead. Okay. The two of them actually, I'm looking at the time, I'm picking one. This second one says, with in, from Ogene Omutame, with increased focus on gas as energy of choice, I expect to see a campaign for increased emphasis on scholarship for studies in this regard. 
from safety to flow current and gas pipelines. So this person is wondering if there is such a, in a campaign. And the second one says, where are we on the Nigerian Gas Master Plan? So um, can I nominate the government uh, to answer the first question? I said uh, in the course of the uh, conversations, Tristone is going to bring about 12,000 jobs directly. And when I discuss with the executive secretary of the NCDMB, he tells me, based on what they see over and above what we see in one spot, a spin-off of additional over 40,000 jobs. Uh, these are not jobs that are trading jobs. These are skill-based jobs. So I would expect that on the back of just trade seven alone, a lot of skill, skills acquisition opportunities will be uh, made available to people who are new to the industry while consolidation happens with those who are already here. As you would expect, safety is the bedrock of the entire industry. If anything, it is the starting point. So in safety development, safety trainings, those will be a given uh, without needing to say too much. But the opportunity sits in the job, uh, job, uh, uh, that jobs that will be provided by Trend 7. And as we say in the Niger Delta, the Niger Delta question is really about unemployment and poverty. And anyone you can knock off, you change the narrative completely. And in this case, Nigeria is tackling that narrative through the provision of these jobs on the back of seven projects. And I think it's a lot to do, which is why we really want to see Trend 8, 9, and 10 well into the future as Nigeria LNG grows. Thank you very much. The so second question, question, and I think maybe Jen, if you... That's correct, please. Jen, did you want to address the second the question? I thought the time is gone, so... <laughs> <laughs> the time is gone, but uh, we can give GMD 30 seconds to just close with that last... Yes, thank Ga you very much. She asked uh, why are we on the gas master plan. I think just to appreciate what is the gas master plan. It's just a process and a plan to make sure you produce from the upstream, create the necessary hub, have the transmission uh, infrastructure, take this gas to homes and businesses. And this is all it's about. Uh, we have taken the bits and pieces of it. Today we have achieved substantial parts of the provisions of the gas master plan uh, with the uh, completion of the OB3 uh, pipeline pro in the next uh, two, three weeks, and also completed the ELFS uh, 2 line. So once you deliver the, the AKK line, you know, you have a, the Y-shaped part of the, the gas master plan, which essentially have the main line available in, in our countries. So essentially, this is probably distribution. We haven't achieved the hope, but the gas supply will work on. So in, in, our, in our countries. So essentially, the rest is probably distribution. We haven't achieved the hope, but the gas supply will work on. So in, in a nutshell, uh, I would say that the gas master plan is on course, and part of it that are on PowerPoint, we are taking them off. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Oh, please give them a round of applause. Thank you, Bala. Wonderful job you've done. Please rise for one quick um, photo session, just, just one. Just um, move, move forward a bit. Where my papa? Just quick, take that, and then we're done. Please, one more time, give them a round of applause. Thank you so much. Now, while, while they are doing that, I want to recognize the presence here. You know, this face mask these days does not allow you to see people in the room. Uh, these people I'm recognizing have been here since morning, as a matter of fact. Uh, let me begin by recognizing engineer Adokie Tomomie, the, a fellow of the Nigerian Society of Engineers and Chief Operating Officer Upstream for NNPC. Maoga, I greet you, sir. Um, good. Is this still morning? Morning, yeah. Welcome. We also have the, I recognized him earlier, this uh, managing director, uh, Nigerian Gas Company, engineer Sheyo Motawa, and group general manager and senior business advisor to the GMD, Mr. Abubakar Mohammed. We welcome you, sir and Group General Manager, Group Public Affairs of the uh, Affairs Division of the NNPC, Dr. Kainde Obateru. D Dr. Kenny Obateru, we welcome, please can we give them a round of applause, top management of the NNPC. We also have, we also have with us the uh, Vice Chairman of SPE Nigeria Council. We welcome Professor Olalekon Olafui. Prof, you're welcome. Um, thank you for being with us. Your Excellencies, very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we're going on to the next session. Now, in this session, we will take one keynote address. After the keynote address, I will come back and constitute the panel. But for now, for the keynote, we are 
We are looking at um, one of the critical challenges of developing domestic gas market in Nigeria, uh, apart from issues surrounding reserves, availability and infrastructure de development and more. If you look at the program with you, you see all of that information. Now, the keynote for this session, I'd like to welcome the Director and Chief Executive Officer of the Department of Petroleum Resources. Please welcome a fellow, the Nigerian Society of Engineers and Chemical Engineers, Engineer Saiki Awalu. Engineer Saiki Awalu. Honorable Minister of State Petroleum Resources, the Permanent Secretary, Minister of Petroleum Resources, uh, the GMD Captain of the Industries here present, uh, CEOs of MDAs here present, my good uh, friend and brother, ES NCDMB. Permit me to really stand on the already established protocol. Really, the decade of gas is well deserved. It is my honor and delight to deliver this keynote address. And the decade of gas towards gas powered economy. I'm thrilled that the president as he mentioned in his speech, that he charged all of us with a clear mandate to leverage on the Nigeria's abundant gas resource for our nation's growth. In the like manner, our industry leader, the Honorable Minister of State of Petroleum Resources, Chief Timber Silva, has clearly articulated key delivery priorities to drive the national agenda of the decade of gas. We at the Department of Petroleum Resources are firmly committed to achieving these priorities in concert with all stakeholders for the benefit of the industry, the larger economy, and indeed the generality of Nigerians, upon whom nature has bestowed abundant resource of this gas. For a fact, thanks to the visionary leadership of Mr. President in setting clear development imperatives for the industry and astute oversight of the Honorable Minister of State who has successfully stirred the NIPS into an industry event that outlines policy and strategy direction for the Nigerian oil and gas industry year in, year out. The rich and engaging sessions which characterize the Nigerian Petroleum Industry Summit offers the industry opportunity to establish strategic frameworks required to ensure that the momentum of energy sustainability and national development is maintained. You will recall, Your Excellencies and distinguished participants, that it was during last year's summit that the Honorable Minister of State launched the Nigerian Gas Transportation Network to serve, key, to serve as key enabler for the gas infrastructural development, among other programs. Today, we are happy to report that the Nigerian Gas Transportation Network Code is fully functional and operational in line with ministerial directives. This is a statement and testament to the fact that NIPS is not a talk show. It is a preeminent summit of leaders for the thoughts that drive national agenda to yield tangible results and desired outcomes. This year's pre-conference, uh, pre-summit conference is significant and timely. This is because of the global economy is gradually recovering from the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. And the efforts are being made worldwide for energy diversification, in recognition of the changing dynamics and the reality of energy transition. As an industry, 
We have demonstrated resilience and adaptability in the face of unprecedented challenges of the first year. And we are emerging stronger. We must remain focused and we, have, we must have an energy to really drive the diversification effort for a sustainable uh, development. We must keep our eyes on the ball. The upcoming conference in January, holding as hybrid, is a step in the right direction to foster a discourse on salient issues as we are entering the decade of gas. As you are aware, our potential of 600 TCF, as mentioned by many speakers before me, with one third of this potential being proven, that is about 203 TCF. I appreciate the statistic presented by the chair OPTS, but the correct figure is actually 203, not 197. These provide an outstanding opportunity for firing our nation's economy with gas. Nevertheless, for our nations to meet up with the aspiration for gas power's economy, it is imperative that the basis for gas strategic framework should be established through policy, enabling incentive and appropriate pricing structure. This has been shared by the President of Nigerian Gas Association. And this implies that proper implementation of policy, incentive and price mechanism will result in robust and matured competitive and sustainable market. So over the last two decades, the gas sector has received attention with respect to development and reforms of the domestic sector. These measures include the Nigerian Gas Master Plan that somebody just asked, where are we? And the GMD tried to put together the pieces and say where we are. The domestic gas supply and pricing policy and regulation, the gas revolution, and the national gas policy, which was approved by the federal government in July 2017. And if you recall, Mr. President, in his speech, tried to mention this. So while the above efforts may not have fully met the specific target, and they do not meet the specific prescribed timeline, they nevertheless have supported the sector into the new decade, which has rightly been declared as decade of gas in Nigeria. So in essence, the previous efforts is being appreciated, which give the basis for us declaring these coming 10 years as decade of gas. Within the first two years, the industry witnessed significant rollout of key programs and projects geared towards addressing the identified gaps of previous initiatives. For instance, we all witnessed the efforts of Honorable Minister of State towards the expeditious passage of the PIB, which will enhance clarity in legislative legislation, regulatory, fiscal and administrative framework in the industry. The petroleum industry bill, when passed into law, will eliminate all the uncertainties, bottlenecks that are associated with gas development in Nigeria. And it will also accelerate growth of Nigerian gas market to a fully developed and matured market. Specifically on gas matters, the PIB provides for the following. Promotion of dedicated gas exploration and development. Gas terms, fiscal separation of gas as commodity, enhancement of domestic gas delivery obligation, tariff structure and methodology, open access regime, and revised gas pricing framework. This is just to mention but a few. Expectedly, upon the passage of the PIB, Requisite provision will be detailed in applicable regulation to properly underpin robust implementation of the bill. To remove the barriers affecting investment and further development of the gas market, 
government has prioritized the delivery of the projects we just mentioned. The ELPS 2, which was completed, the OB3, as explained on GMD in two weeks to be really hooked up, and the AKK, that is Ajakuta Kaduna Kano Pipeline, as critical backbone gas infrastructure. This is required to improve gas delivery and availability. So the growing infrastructure is opening up, is to open up the market and provide needed incentive for further investment by the private sector in gas exploration and development for reserve growth, production, processing, transmission, distribution, and utilization across the country. Furthermore, implementation of Nigerian gas expansion program, the Nigerian gas clear commercialization program, and the operationalization of the Nigerian gas transportation network are further enablers for investment in the developing gas landscape and Nigerian gas-powered economy by 2030. In the meantime, the Department of Petroleum Resources has reviewed the regulatory requirement to stimulate participation and enhance investment in the gas sector. This is done through streamlining our approval processes and the implementation of gas business incentive and support initiative in line with the Nigerian gas expansion program. Notwithstanding the foregoing, the issue of gas pricing is central in achieving the mandate for the decade of gas, as this gas pricing drives the five critical levers for robust gas development. And these levers, as you know, are availability, accessibility, affordability, and acceptability, as well as the deliverability. Whereas reference has been made to the other element in this discussion, right pricing of gas is, the, is, the requiring, is requiring particular attention to ensure security of gas supply and security of credible gas demand. We heard from the last session where the buyer want, the seller want to sell, but at a good and right price. This is because upstream gas producers, upstream gas producers must pay attention and the market, let the market speak. That is when you will now open up the market. So accordingly, most robust sustainable price is let the market speak. To conclude this, I would like to let me assure the commitment of the Department of Petroleum Resources to remain as enabler and business opportunity provider in the oil and gas industry as, we, as our focus remain effective in implementing all policy and strategy for this government to achieve the intent of the decade of gas. Thank you and God bless. Thank you very much, um, Director and Chief Executive Officer of GPR. Quickly, before we get to the next session, we will now welcome the Honorable Minister of State to conclude this opening part before we take our second session. Let's welcome again His Excellency Chief Timmy Presilva for the concluding remarks of this particular opening session before we go into the second panel discussion. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, we would, um, on his directive, I have ministerial directive to continue as uh, I have been guided. Okay, so we will now take the panel session real quick. Let me begin by first welcoming our panel members. First off is Engineer Yusuf Usman, Chief Operating Officer, Gas and Power of the NMPC. We we'll welcome him.
Also on this panel is the STA to the Honorable Minister of State Petroleum Resources on Gas Matters, Justice Derefaka. <laughs> Managing Director SNEPCO, Mr. Bayo Ojulari is on the panel. We welcome him. <laughs> Managing Director Nigerian Ports Authority, Hadiza Bala Usman is unable to join us, but General Manager MPA Abuja, Mr. Edi Kabir, is on the panel. We welcome Mr. Kabir. <laughs> We're told that distinguished Senator... We're told that distinguished Senator James Manager is um, kind of held up at the chamber, uh, Marlow Chambers. Hopefully he would um, meet us, but we will continue. We have the assurances of the Honorable Minister of State that everyone who needs to play a part in advancing this course of a decade of gas will be brought in. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I will now call on our moderator. I'd like to welcome our moderator, the Chairman of the Nigerian Association of Energy Correspondents. He's moderating the panel. I'd like to welcome him. Okay, so it's, it's important, as the experts will say, that we don't sit for too long. Indulge me for 60 seconds to 90 of it. Indulge me to allow you to stretch a little bit before this panel so that um, there will be increased assimilation and engagement. Shall we please rise? Rise and just stretch out, stretch it a little bit. Those of you online, you can do the same. Don't um, sit down while we're doing this. Please also stand up, stretch a little bit, move to the left, move to the right. You know, swing your hands if you, if you can. If you can, throw your legs to the left, to the right. Just move your body some way, somehow. Do something. Do something. Just do something. Just, you know, stretch out. Let the bottom go away. Let the bottom go away. Let the bottom go away. Because they say too much talking with, without stretching can make assimilation a bit body. Let the bottom go away. Okay, so I think we can sit down. We can sit down and uh, let me yield now to the panel. I leave the panel now to the Chairman, Nigeria Association of Energy Correspondents. You can take it away, brother. All right, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, members of the panel, let me welcome you um, graciously. Um, we'll just take a cue from what happened in the first session of um, the panel session and ask... Um, uh, Mr. Yunus, Yusuf, to um, give us his opening remark, everybody will do, and um, we can take the conversation off from there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, let me start by appreciating the Honorable Minister of State Petroleum Resources and the GMD for making my job easier by declaring 2020 the year of gas and also 2021, the beginning of the decade of gas, has made my job a lot easier. I'm in the business of selling gas and trying to promote the use of gas both externally and in the domestic market. When we extract the demand growth from now to the next three, four years, we realize that 70% of our gas will go to power and commercial and gas-based industry will take about 20% each. It then means that power becomes the biggest enabler for attaining the decade of gas. If that is the case, then we have to do all it takes to unleash the enormous potential in the power business. As I speak to you today, we have a sitting capacity that does not have problem of infrastructure. Investment has been made. The power is there, ready to run. But for one reason or the other, 
we cannot unleash this power. If things are sorted out in the power sector, I will be in a position to sell 2.2 BCF of gas today. But today, we are only delivering 800,000 with best of intention. And therefore, for the sector to be liberalized, so that we go in the direction of willing buyer, willing seller that the entire industry is hoping for, we have to do all it takes to resolve the power. Infrastructure is key. And I may bold to say that since the coming of this administration, we have been making effort to establish infrastructure. The ELP2 is up and running. I'm in a position to deliver 2.2 BCF gas in that line. OB3, half of it is running. The rest, by end of April, thereabout, will cross River Niger, and then we will be in a position to receive volumes. Another critical factor that I needed to say is we need to unleash the potentials of the upstream supply. And because the upstream supply is directly linked to demand, and the upstream suppliers needed to make investment, and therefore the gas that is going to come in has to find a home. And that is why it's important that we integrate the domestic infrastructure with export infrastructure to de-risk the upstream supply, such that when the gas comes in and the, demand, uh, the, the domestic projects are not ready, they can go to fill up the train of the LNG. And I think that is one key policy decision that has to make to properly integrate the domestic infrastructure with export in order to de-risk the upstream this supply. This is supply. Channel's television. You've been watching a live coverage of the launch of the Decade of Gas Development by President Muhammadu Buhari virtually in Abuja and the Ministry of Petroleum and NLNG Decade of Gas Conference. We now return to our other programming for the day. News track is up next. You've been watching a live Channels Television event.